Hey guys, I'm Ketan again. Today we're solving another problem from the beginner level of course chef in C++ and the problem we're solving is smallest number of nodes. Problem code is FLOW005. Okay. Consider a currency system in which there are nodes of seven denominations, namely rupees 1, 2, 5, 10, 50 and 100. If the sum of rupees n is input, write a program to compute smallest number of nodes that will combine to give uh, then n, n number of rupees, right? Sorry, n rupees. Okay. Uh, in the case, let's let's go through the inputs and I'll explain what it is exactly. So in the first input, 1200. Uh, first test case, 1200. Uh, we can have 12 uh, uh, hundred rupee notes, and that will cover the 1200 amount, right? So that's the least number of nodes that you can have because if you take 50 rupee notes, you'll need 24 of them if you consider all 50 rupee notes. Otherwise, you could take 11 of 100 rupee notes and 2 of 50 rupee notes, right? There could be a lot of combinations uh, to get to n, but what we want is the minimum number of nodes. That's the combination that we want. We don't actually need the combination like the order of them, but what we need is just how many what is the minimum number of roads right so in this case it's 12 uh, for 1200 because we can select all hundreds and in 500 we can select five of the hundred rupee notes so that will be five and in 242 we can select 200 rupee notes right and we can't select 50 because that will again be over the budget right so we have two already selected and we can select four 10 rupee notes right so 2 plus 4, that's six, note, 6 notes are already done. Then we can take a 2 rupee, two rupees note, right? And add it to already 6 we have. So we have, we'll get to 7 and our n value is, uh, we have reached the n value, right? So that's the smallest number of possible uh, notes. So that will be 7, okay? So this problem is actually very similar to another problem that I actually covered a couple of videos ago, which is seal and receipt right this problem so you can check that out too it is very similar uh, except that there is no uh, clear uh, you know pattern between these numbers right these are uh, they don't follow a specific pattern but in that case there is a specific pattern so i'll show you how to deal with uh, deal with them when there is no specific pattern right okay let's jump into code Uh, this is just for handling the test cases and we know that these denominations are constant right so we can declare them before even taking the input so let's uh, have a integer array okay let's let's put it here so it will be simple simpler we have an array a and it will take 1 2 5 10 50 and 100 i think these are the denominations we have seven denominations or six one two three four five six we have six denominations he said seven but there there are only six one two five ten and fifty and hundred right so these will be put in an array right let's call it denominations denoms right this is array now uh, we are taking n value so we need to take we have a variable for that n and then we take in n right now what we can do is well we have six variable six numbers in the array right so the size of this array is six right so based on that we initialize uh, a variable j inside for the loop and it will be starting with five because we want to uh, address we want to access the last element in this array which is uh, the index will be five because C++ follows zero based indexing. So the index of this thing is zero. This is one, this is two and so on. And this will be five, right? So we're accessing the last element first. And while J is greater than or equals to zero, J minus minus, right? So what we do is, uh, we'll also need another variable called answer. It will be zero first. So the answer is the number of nodes minimum number of nodes this will be the uh, answer that we output 
so we can just write c out answer and we have a end line for formatting the output okay so all the magic happens inside this loop now right we are starting here because we have to see if we can include 100 rupee notes uh, within our budget right the budget is basically n so we have to see if we can have 100 rupee notes in our budget right uh, instead of checking it what we can do is in three simple steps we can solve this problem the first step is uh, answer plus equals to n divided by uh, denoms of j right that's the first step and then i'll explain the steps n percentile equals to denoms of j and then that's it it's only two steps okay so what is happening here we are checking well we are not checking but if uh, okay let's let's take an example so that it will be clear let's take 242 as the example now when we divide 242 uh, well the n value is 242 first and when we divide n with denoms of j which is 100 we'll get 2 because this is integer division right now n percentile equals to denoms so now we uh, we understand that with this statement we understand that we can put 2 of the 100 rupee notes inside uh, in, in our answer so we take them right because this is the maximum value this is the reason that we are uh, accessing the elements from the end right we want to get the maximum uh, valued nodes first and then the lesser valued nodes next right so we follow this order that's why i have stored them in the increasing order too you could also do this you could store them in decreasing order and then you you can start the j value at zero and then go up to six right up to five or however you do it right okay so we are seeing how many uh, current valued uh, nodes can be fit in the case of this one we can fit 200 rupee notes if we fit the third one it will be 300 and we can't have 300 in our budget right so that will be 2 and it will be stored in answer it will be added to the answer right answer is 0 first so we are adding 2 now n percentile denoms of j now n value is 242 and n percentile equals to denoms means 242 percentile 100 which will result in 42 right percentile means remainder so when we divide 242 with 100 will be rem uh, the remainder will be 42 right so this basically says that when after we fit all the possible number of nodes of current value inside the budget what will be the leftover budget right this is what the leftover budget will be right this is just the fir first iteration now we have fit all the possible 100 rupee notes and in the second iteration we check with uh, well in the second iteration this will be 42 instead of 242 right because we have changed it here right now we check 42 uh, and 50 right 42 divided by 50 will be 0 point uh, something but we don't consider that because this is integer division so we'll just get 0 which means we can't fit any 50 rupee notes into our budget right and then we check it with we check 42 percentile 50 and it will be 42 right this is less than this so it will definitely be 42 right this is a property of modulo you, you can check this out uh, these are really help, helpful in solving a lot of problems so uh, get good with these operators okay now we, we store it into n okay now in the answer we haven't added anything so this will still be 2 because we added 2 previously now we go to the when in the next iteration we check this thing so 42 percentile 10 because we haven't changed 42 yet now when we do this we'll get 42 divided by 10 we get 4.2 but since we are not taking decimals it's just 4 after this uh, 42 percentile of 10 and that will give us 2 right because when we fit all the possible 10 rupee notes into our budget we'll be left with 2 right now we continue this we, we uh, i'm skipping 5 because uh, it won't matter here 
and then when we get to 2, 2 divided by 2 will give 1, 1 is added to the answer and then 2 percentile 2 is 0, right? Uh, we could write a condition that if it is becoming 0, we exit, but it won't matter because there are only 6 denominations, right? So the loop will only go 6 times, right? What's, uh, in the worst possible case, you fit all the uh, numbers in the first element itself, with the first currency itself, uh, which is actually happening in this case, 1200. So it will do 5 more iterations. So it's not such a big deal. If you wanted to, you can write it to optimize the code, but I'm not doing it because it's, it really doesn't matter. After that, we'll just output the answer, right? So this will this should work. And we should get 12, 5 and 7 as the, as the outputs. That's what we got. So let's submit this and uh, in, the mean in the meantime, let me talk about time and space complexity. So the time complexity is constant because we are only running through the loop a set number of times, which is the size of this array, which is six, right? We'll definitely go through this loop six times. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. You could think that what happens if we have already exhausted n value and n is zero? Well, it doesn't matter because n divided by n, zero divided by anything will be zero. So answer will definitely be zero and then n percentile equal to d norms of j will also won't matter because zero percentile anything will be zero and n is zero itself, right? So there won't be any changes in them. That's why we don't have to worry about that case too much, right? So we have talked about the space complexity and it is order of one and it's, uh, it's also known as constant time and the space complexity is also order of one because although we have an array of d norms, it is fixed size, right? It's not dependent on what is the n value. It's not changing with the n value, so it's constant size. So that's why uh, the space complexity is also order of one. Okay, so this is uh, the optimal solution. And thank you for watching. So share with your friends and subscribe so that you can also uh, see other problems and learn from them. Thanks.